God, I'm a little nervous. Like school. Okay. Welcome. This is the Seattle Tourism Guide for people who would spend most of the time indoors, even if there wasn't a pandemic at the moment. So you. Mm -hmm. Or, train whistle blows where train takes me is where I goes. I don't. Yeah. Fire. Someone liked it. So I've spent the last. We spent the last three years living in Seattle, and I feel like it's taken me about three years to learn anything about Seattle. And so I want to attack the tourism question from the perspective of someone who really hasn't gone outside much, who wouldn't know anything about tourism. I think that's a valuable perspective in this. As someone who knows nothing, so I'm going to talk about all the stuff that lazy dumbasses would go do, like me. And like you. <laughs> okay, what is the most important part of any trip? What do you need to know about the place you're gonna go more than anything else? Food? That's right. Restaurants. Dude! You did know. I picked three restaurants that I think that you should know about. Because there's obviously the, the major players. There's dicks. Everyone knows about dicks. I've Everyone knows dicks. about... Ever heard of dicks? Everyone knows about Savari. Everyone knows about Lemonhead. Yeah. Everyone knows about Top Banana Fruit Stand. Yeah. But not many people know about Scooters. So I wrote some things down here. They have great burgers and fries plus shakes. You would agree with that. Yeah, everything in Scooters is delicious. Everything's delicious. They have the best veggie burger in Seattle. And I feel confident saying that because I've tried every one. Yeah. Me neither. Now, there's a few problems with it. There's only one. So you kind of got to you kind of gotta find it and track it down. It's part of... It wasn't that funny what I said. It's part of the charm. It's part of the charm is it's tucked away neatly. It's like hard to find and it's by a QVC or QFC. It's kind of strange. I, we've lived, we live close to it. Not that cheap or fast. It's not that cheap or fast and it's got a weird location. <laughs> but it's really good. It's so good. It's so if you cheap have some, for, what it, for what it is, I think. You think so? I think everything's expensive in Seattle, to be honest. No, that's what I'm saying. Like for being a Seattle burger place, it's... It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay. I don't know. I've never had to pay for it. That's true. And just ride your coattails. Alright, next I have, I don't know how to say it, Suave, which I thought was, that's the that's the Italian restaurant we went to way back in Ravetta, where it I got gnocchi. It was called Suave, that's what I it looked like. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, we went to there. Remember I had the gnocchi? It's the best gnocchi I ever had. I've never had gnocchi before in my life, and I was like, I don't even remember why I ordered it, but I was like, oh my god. This is the best food I've ever tasted. I've never tasted anything as good as this. And so every, and ever since then I've always had, had gnocchi at other Italian restaurants or we have it at home. And I've been like, it's okay. But that first gnocchi I had there was the most delicious thing I've ever tasted in my life. So you have to go here. And I've only been here once, but I've thought about it ever since. Mm -hmm. It's tucked away, our little secret. Not many people know about it, or maybe they do, but I don't know. It's such a secret, I don't even know. Don't even I remember don't even it. Remember. And you went to it. <laughs> the nicest guy ever runs it. I remember he himself was like our server, and he was so cool. He was so nice. And there he is right there in the picture, I think. I don't know who else that would be. You gotta try it. I highly recommend it. I'm not gonna. Okay, and the third and final restaurant I picked is Frankie and Joe's. It's not really a restaurant. It's an ice cream joint. This is an interesting pick. I wouldn't expect this from you. I love Frankie and Joe's. There's two, actually. There's lots. It's, a, it's an ice cream place. But it's not... You know, it's no Baskin Robbins. There's no, like, cotton candy flavor. There's no bubblegum. Don't no go for yeah. like. go, 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 go. There's a lot of weird... There's, like, moon goo and shit like that. That guy looks tasty. Wait, I shouldn't be looking at chat. This is a presentation. I need to ignore chat. I'll check it. I'll let you know if it's important. Okay, so okay. So far, nothing important is coming so There's in. some 911 in there. Like, maybe my wife's giving birth. It's vegan friendly. It's vegan friendly, I've which is cool. The, everything is, it's plant-based. It's all plant-based. Yeah. Which Don't makes let that you, dissuade you. Makes you think you're like, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's fucking delicious. It's fucking so good. Frankie Joe's is so fucking good. And it's so like unique, like it is just ice cream, but it goes down so smooth. It's not like ice cream you ever had. Like I never tasted ice cream, probably never tasted ice cream quite like it. Whipper Will is asking if it's like Cupcake Royale, which is another. I don't. Cupcake is that a Royale. chain outside of Seattle? I don't know. I've never seen it anywhere else. It is better than Cupcake Royale. Cupcake Although, Royale is delicious. Cupcake, I think it's very different. Like Frankie's yeah. and Joe's is like if you want to eat weird ass shit, and and that feels very Seattle. And Cupcake Royale, Royale is like you could find that anywhere. I feel like. A yeah. good cupcake. Place. I agree. That's not to say that there's not room in this world for the cupcake royales and the Baskin Robbins and the full tilled ice cream oh, and stuff like there that. There is. There's room. there's much there's room. Plenty room. But there's also a lot of room for places like Frankie and Joe's. Obviously, it's a very uncornered market. I've never like had a, anything like it. I no. think that's why it's special. Yeah, and it's so good. And there's like 
everything on the menu is delicious, but it doesn't seem like it'll be, which is like the best kind of shit. There's the kind of stuff you're like, eh, and then you taste it and you're like, eh. Yeah, I highly recommend Frankie and Joe's. I think if you're going there for the first time, you should go with the, uh, oh, what's it called? Brown sugar flavor. Brown sugar, it's oh the yeah. Tamest. Because when I first went there, I got like a weird ass flavor with weird ass toppings, and I was like, yeah. that place is disgusting. You got so like, you gotta ease in. You got like the salted caramel flavor with moon goo, which, which is salted caramel. So it was like double salted caramel, and it did not taste good. I got a, I got a look from the woman yeah. who was serving it to me. I, we didn't get it, but then we tasted it, and then we got it. I mean, it was still, I mean, it was okay, but it, it was, was just bad. too much. It tasted like asphalt. Mm -hmm. I love salted caramel though. But yeah, that's Frankie and Joe's. I thought that was I thought that was an interesting pick because it's you know not many. I don't know how popular Frankie and Joe's is, but it's kind of like tucked away. Although there are two. Okay, now what's the second thing that everyone goes there for? What's the second most exciting to and important Seattle part? Seattle or to anywhere? In Seattle. What is the second thing you go for? Like pretty views. No. The second the second reason you would go to Seattle, the second most important thing, is boba. Now I named another three boba places, actually only two boba places, because I couldn't think of a third one. But then you should have asked me. I should have asked you. The, the thing about boba, the, my thought process was, I could, okay, I could think of like a lot of like singulars, but there's no reason to go to like any of them over Oasis, except for one, which is the other one I put in, which you'll see. And I don't say what it is, but try and you, maybe you have a guess. I Don't yeah. say that out loud, because that's what it is. Yeah. Oasis is the first I put on here. It's all over the city. There's one in the U district, They're there's one in the really international late. district. They're open forever. I think it has the coolest internal world of any of them. I, like the one in the international district has like a cool pinball machine and I'm operating under the assumption that the pandemic is over for all this because you probably won't be visiting much right now. Yeah, it's a cool place and it's nice and college students go in there and it's really good. It and tastes really good. The two locations, is there more than two locations? I don't know. Um, there's one in on the Ave and there's one in the International District and those are both like classic Seattle areas. Especially yes. I feel like if you don't want to seem like a tourist and you want to come to Seattle and seem like a yo a yokel, like if you're if you're walking around in the Ave and you're getting boba, you seem like you're you fit in. And it's just such a cool place to be. Same thing with the International District. District. Yeah. So it like not only is it a good thing you're getting, you're in a cool place while you're getting it. I completely agree. Oasis, a great spot to go. That should be their catchphrase. A great yeah, it should. A great spot to go. A brief period of respite in the hellscape of Seattle, an oasis. But it's not the best wow. place in Seattle. No. The, the best boba in Seattle is, is in a weird strip mall along the creepiest road in the entire city, surrounded by people. I've never talked to and never will talk to. Hangry Panda. As I said, it's a, it's a weird spot. And right now, there's no dining in, and I'm not sure if there ever will be. It's kind of it creepy. It just opened, like, a couple months ago. Like, oh, really? Yeah, during so they're still the unpacking. pandemic. That makes sense. So it is literally, like, finding its roots, finding yeah. its, its footing, and it is delicious. It's, like, the most cramped, weird spot, but I always see people there. I always see people waiting outside for their orders to take elsewhere. People order in all the time. It is popping off. I didn't know it was awesome. so new. It's, yeah. It, it has a sign delicious. on the front that says grand opening still. Still? I didn't even notice that. I'm not very observant. It's the best shit. It's the best bulb I've ever had. The workers are so nice. Yep. We, my mom went there like their soft opening and the guy still remember because it's him and his wife who own the place and he still remembers her every time we go in. Yeah. And even when I go in, he's like, oh, you're the kid <laughs> of that mother that's in here. And I'm like, yeah. And yeah. he remembers our names and it's crazy. It's amazing. It's the most like weird, cramped, secretive spot in the entire city. But if you find it, you will not be disappointed. What's the, what's the sesame seed one called? Panda milk. There's panda milk. And it's an original recipe. He was yes. telling us about it, like, because they were trying to find boba recipes, and his wife is the is the mastermind behind everything. And he was like, she just whipped this up because we wanted to have, like, a special <laughs> specialty drink, and it's insane, and it's really good. It's so good. It's like nothing you ever had. The re he, what did he say to mom? He was like, it has sesame seeds in it, so white people usually won't like it. Yeah. He was like, we were scared to put this on the menu because white people don't like sesame seeds in yeah. their drinks, but it's really popular in Asia. Oh, I can, as a white person, I will soothe white people's, er, white, I will soothe white people's, what's the word? Concerns? Woes? I will soothe your white person woes. It's really good. It's the panda milk is so good, and it tastes like something you never had before, but it's so good. I highly recommend it. You gotta get it. If you're in Seattle and you're looking for boba, try and find Hangry Panda. Or just type it into Google and it'll take you there. It's not a fucking scavenger hunt. <laughs> so what's the third most important thing? 
It's we've had restaurants. We've, we've had, had restaurants, boba. boba. Similar things. You might say they would be no, in the not same at all. Category, Just forget that. Just stop talking about that. I still stand on on locations. Exactly. Cool spots to walk. Me know and of lots course, of things. you know a lot of things, such as that the pier is a fun place to go. Very popular. Very popular place. Probably the most touristy spot. It's got like it has the Ferris wheel. It has the Ferris wheel that you always see on NFL broadcasts. It's really close to Pike's Place, which is the the fish throwing market that you always see on NFL broadcasts. It's really close to the water. It's the Puget Sound, right? Yes. Yeah, it's it's really close to the Puget Sound. You can take water taxis across to get to the other side. It's you can West get this, Seattle. Yeah, to West Seattle. You can get to cruises. Like there's like that's where cruises drop people off. Yeah, there's lots of uh, ferries places yeah. so you can go to other islands too in the Puget mm -hmm. in the Puget. I think. Also, we, I mean, we were just down there a couple, couple days ago, and it's super, like, you just hop on a bus and go to the International District. Yeah. Or, yeah. Really close to the, I mean, it is pretty much downtown. Yeah. It's a really cool spot. And it has great food, great seafood. And it gets better every time because they're constantly working on it. Like, they just took down the viaduct, which was, like, a giant oh, yeah. concrete roadway, and they just took it down because they're trying to, like, open yeah. it up. So you. the longer we live here, the cooler it gets future people who to visit, you, right there, that I can see, Alan, you don't have to worry about the viaduct, or anything else that's in the past that sucked, because it's getting better. Clam trout or fish and chip, you know, you're not going to get, like, sushi. Well, maybe there is sushi there. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I would, don't go to the pier for sushi. Go for fish and chips. Exactly. And everyone loves fish and chips. And there's, like, arcades and stuff like that. I love the pier. The pier is cool. The second coolest spot, in my opinion, now this is a little more, like, I tried to, like, you know, I tried to approach this a little bit more like, where's a place that no, like, why would you come here unless you heard about it? Because it's not, like, historic. Like a local. Yeah, a local spot. So I thought Ballard's Market Street. It's much smaller town feel. It doesn't feel like Seattle. You can see yeah. the skyline in the distance, but it's pretty far from downtown. It feels, you might have been to a place that feels just like it. It's distance from the hustle and bustle of downtown. But it has a million cool-ass shops, yeah. like Sonic Boom, the record store which is so cool. I love that place. They sell, like, I bought, like, Resident Evil 2 soundtrack, finally. Yeah, they have, I, every time I go there and I'm looking for a very specific record, they have it. Like, they just, yeah. a lot of, like, niche indie artists, they have a lot of that. They have a lot of video game soundtracks, yep. movie soundtracks, so. Great selection, and really nice people work there. Yeah. There's also Full Tilt, which is an ice cream store I mentioned earlier. Which is really good. Classic very good. ice cream. Like, Classic. Just, like, in a waffle cone. If you want birthday cake ice cream, you can go there. They also have a ton of arcade games that you can't access right now because of the virus, but it's really fun to go there. That's why it's called Full Tilt, because they have some tons of pinball machines. And Crazy Taxi, which is the best arcade game of all time. Right? You agree? Crazy Taxi. There's also a bookstore I don't remember. Secret Garden Books. Secret Garden Books. Great bookstore. Yep. I met the love of my life there, but that's a story for another time. We'll tell that later. There's also the art store. What's that called? Annie's Art. Annie's Art. And Supply. And Supply. Which is where we bought my, our mom a Christmas bag for cr presents. for Christmas. And also, I bought the three sketchbooks from there. It, and Ballard? I'm on the third one. Really? Yeah, I got three. Fun fact: there. Ballard yeah. used to be its own little town, and yeah. it still rem it still feels like that. Like mm -hmm. you, it feels very separate from Seattle and still incorporated. And I think if you want to like just find something, it's not touristy. I mean, people who go there are locals. It's the people who live in Ballard who go to Ballard Street. And yeah. they have a farmer's market on Sunday, and mm -hmm. it's just like, it's like a small town, but with all the perks of a big city. Yeah. Like, in, you know, you go to a small town to get this feel, but then people are racist and terrible, and it's weird. So you go here, and it's like everyone, like full tilt, there's like BML flags and stuff like yep. that, and it just, yeah, yeah, BML. BLM. Black Lives Matter flags. Um, and it just, yeah. Just big money Small lions. town feel, big city parks. Yeah, exactly. It's a great place. And the parking's not that bad. There's a lot of parking. There's a lot of parking. Lots of like 30 minute park zones and yeah. stuff. A lot of like secret free spots. And there's residential areas just over there. So you can fuck someone over and park in front of their house and just walk. Which is cool. I love doing that. But of course, as everyone who's familiar with Seattle even slightly knows, the best and coolest part of Seattle is one specific road right next to the biggest college. Personal favorite part of Seattle, the Ave, or University Way. There's so much good food. The specific place I want to recommend, you can't even actually go inside, you can only order. It's called Fat Ducks. It's a deli that is run by the nicest woman of all time. They have unbelievably good, good sandwiches. Unbelievably good sandwiches. Probably the best sandwich I've ever had. It's good. The corned beef sandwich is my favorite. I ordered that so many times. I remember I ordered it like five times in a row in like over the course of two weeks. 
and she would call me the lady and we'd just discuss it like she had like oh what was it it was like a really specific corned beef and she kept being like i'm sorry we're out and then i would like order again because i wanted to try the really good corned beef and she's like we still don't have it and then until the fifth time when it, they finally did have it and it was like was it worth it the was hype? fucking worth the hype <laughs> but like she like we like discuss we just like kind of talked and like she knows my name because then like a year and a half later we just ordered it again and it had been that long since i ordered from here and she wrote on the bag with the food harper how have you been with a big smiley face and i was like oh my god i cannot believe she fucking remembers dude because i had ordered the exact same thing and i have a weird name she is the nicest person and it is the best sandwiches in the goddamn city and you can't go in you have to order online but that is on the app i love fat ducks never forget fat ducks go eat there it has the coolest stores in the city i think the red yeah. light district an no, amazing store no it's just called red light red light district is the place where prostitution is legal in amsterdam that's cool too but the coolest store i'm talking about is only called red light there's also another i don't remember any of the other stores there's, there. there's just tons of, lots thrift, stores. of thrift stores and vintage shops yeah. and most there's just like a goodwill there that's really nice yeah. too and i don't feel like any of it well maybe that's not true but i feel like most of it is moderately priced yeah, it's a good place. Like, I've never been, like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. There's also yeah. an Oasis is here. The, uh, the Boba Top, the Boba Spot we mentioned earlier, there's an Oasis there. There's yeah. also one called Share Tea, which is good, too. It's right by the university. That's why it's called University Way. And yeah. so As I said, here, many hot people It is unbelievable. There. It's kind of a double-edged sword because, one, you get to look at a lot of hot people. A lot of hot men, women, and other. But... You might feel bad about yourself. Yeah. You are just as hot as everyone in Seattle. Don't be dissuaded. But it's a really cool place, and it's like, again, it's like, if you are a local, you go to the AF. Because it's kind yes. of, I, I, it's like, I mean, it's kind of creepy. It's well, kind of creepy, here's but my in next like a very charming way. Sort of scary at night, which is thrilling. Thrilling! And I would not, if you are a femme, don't go alone at night. Yes, I would agree with you that. You will get... You will get jabbed or stabbed. You will get offered to sell insurance. You will get inducted into a pyramid scheme. Oh, okay. I didn't know where that was going. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and there's a bar tells drugs, as you can see right there. I love the Ev. I go there all the time. Yeah, me and my friends go there. We get a boba. We walk yep. to the thrift stores. We go to the game stores. Well, speaking of game stores, the final section is, game is game stores. This is the most important part of the city. This is why everyone would come. It's for the amazing retro game stores. Except, there is one retro game store here that I would not describe as amazing called Game Gurus, which is close to Hangry Panda. I just put it on to, maybe they'll see this and change their ways, because <laughs> I hate this place. It's the most <laughs> creepy store I've ever been in. The service is like weird, and they always seem like they want me to leave. The selection is really good, though. They have a ton of games. I have never been in there. I have and only never sat in the be. car when you're in the parking lot, yeah. and it is the creepiest fucking parking lot I've yes, ever been yes. in. Yes, yes. I try and get in and out of there as fast as I can, and I always go there third after I go to the other two. I'm always like, okay, well, they didn't have what I want here. They didn't have what I want there. I guess I'll go to Game Gurus. And I'm ashamed. I walk in so embarrassed, cover it's my right face. It's right next to a vape store. Yes, it is. That's which is a good part. There's also like a DVD burning store next to it. I don't even know if it's a business. It feels like it, it. That whole strip of Seattle, Aurora. It's on Aurora, right? Yeah. Feels like it was like airlifted from a small ass creepy city town, and then like dropped in the middle of Seattle. Yeah. And it feels just like like from ten years ago, also. And it was just cut out, and they're like, "Here, have this." And we we're all like, "We don't want it." But then also, cool stuff came. There is, there is cool stuff like Hangry Pen, the second best retro game store. And when I say second best, I mean like, like Game Gurus is like an F. Okay. Game Gurus is like a Z. Okay. The second best one is like a B, or even like an A minus. I love this store, and it's on the University District. It's called Al's. I really like this store. For the, the biggest reason is I really like the people who work there. They They're don't have many really employees. Nice. Yeah. yeah, you and you see them a lot. Yeah, you see these same people a lot. I remember the, there's one guy who works there who I kept going back over a course of a week and kept buying SNES games. I remember like the last time I went and he was like, so you like really filling out your SNES collection, huh? I was like, yeah, I've just been on an SNES kick and we just talked about it. And then he was, I bought like Super Punch Out and he's like, oh, I love this game. I hope you like it, man. He was just so fucking nice. And then they're all nice. They're all cool. Yeah. And I was like, it's one of those stores that has a dog in it. It does? Sometimes they bring the dog in there. Oh. You know? I you love know? those kind of places. Yeah. Some places, places they bring their dog. always good. They're always the best. But the cool thing that you might notice by the sign, which I also said best sign. I, this picture right here doesn't do it justice. That is the weirdest, like, I love that sign so much. <laughs> it's so 
fucking it's weird. It's so weird. It's like the money. Like someone, I don't know who made that. I don't know what. I just don't know. It's like, <laughs> I don't know nothing thesis. about that. I don't know nothing. Because <laughs> it is the weirdest fucking sign. And you can't even, the eyes, because it's on the Ave and I've walked by it so many times. And before I actually went in and I still never really knew what it was. I was like, that looks creepy as fuck. But it's actually <laughs> really, really cool inside. And it feels so Seattle. Like they just have like posters printed up everywhere and and records and yeah it just feels so seattle yeah it really does i love that place and some nice people work there i will say about the video game selection when you're walking on the right there's a big display there's two display cases that have a bunch of games that's where like all the big shit like the expensive shit goes in like the silent hill twos or the boxed majora's masks of the world that's where you'll find that but they have Tucked in the corner on the other side of the store is like a huge line of games that I didn't even know was there for the first like mm. two times I visited. That they have so much stuff there, like tucked away, that you can just sort through. Don't forget to check that, because there is good stuff there. It's not like just all the shit. It's not all the fucking family feud games back there, whatever. That's a bad example, because those games are dope. They do have a lot but they have a lot of games. And they also have video game soundtracks and stuff in the soundtrack part. Yeah. It's well, a great store. It's, it's like a bowling alley. It's really... I, I I would not go to it during COVID because it is really long and narrow and... It's cramped. And the, the, it's just full of, like, rows of CDs and games and stuff. And the times that I have gone in there in the pandemic, you get, like, trapped on the other side and you have to, like, squeeze by someone. So I would save it for an after-pandemic treat. Yeah. If I were you. I would too. But, of course, the king of the Seattle retro game market. We all know it. It's world famous. Everyone in the entire world has been in there at one point. It's like the big black cube. Mecca? It's Pink Gorilla. The obvious best choice. There's two in the city, both near dope ass parts of town. One is on the University F. District and the F. Yeah. Previously we... mentioned cool ass places. Previously mentioned cool ass places. You can also get an Oasis Boba. You can get an Oasis Boba at both of them. Both of them are very close proximity to Oasis. I love Pink Gorilla. The best selection of all the game stores in Seattle. Best aesthetic. The best internal. It doesn't feel queer. Que it doesn't feel queer. <laughs> it doesn't feel weird. Feel straight. <laughs> Very hetero atmosphere inside, which I like. No, a yeah, complete opposite. It's pink and shit's furry and Full there's Pokemon plushes. animal stuffies everywhere. Yeah. I think I've seen a dog in there too at one point, maybe. Maybe. Mm. Oh, for sure. That's it seems like a maybe. place that would have a dog in it. Maybe one dog. Or two. It, it, what I'm saying is they're not above having a dog in there, which is obviously okay, ideal. Fine. Yeah, um, they have very, very fair prices. Very fair. I feel like I've never been ripped. Don't look at me. I don't know. Like all the time, I go in there and I'm like, okay, and I'll check the prices on price charting, which is the obvious. Like everyone uses price charting, and it's like this is exactly in line. The prices are. I'm ne I feel like I've never been overcharged there, which is not that you cannot say that about game gurus or owls. You go to owls. You you will go to Pink Gorilla and owls. Owls and Pink Gorilla are like blocks apart. You'll go and see the same game there. I remember I bought Symphony of the Night, Castlevania, for PS2, PS1, a Pink Gorilla for like a lot of money because it's an expensive game. I went to Al's and saw it for like 20 bucks more. The exact same thing. Like, same quality of case. Same, that they had the manual and everything. Damn. Just 20 bucks That's more. A high markup. Yeah, Al's marks it up. Pink Gorilla does not do that. Extremely fair prices. You can tell that they've researched extensively what tell things should go for. Work there. Yes, yes, you can. The great service. Should have said good service because I don't want to put it on the same level as Alice because I think Alice is better service. For I sure. really like those people in there. Uh, when I bought I bought Harper a Christmas present there. Yeah. I bought you, you can say what it is. It was Metal Gear Solid for the Game Boy. The Game Boy Color. Color, which is the coolest game of all time. A very cool game. It's the coolest game ever. And made. it's pretty expensive. Yes, it I is. Mean, yeah, for what it is, for being a Game Boy game. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure I, that I was right. And so I went in there and I bought it, and the guy was like so nice, and he was like, this is such a cool pick, and I was like, it's a present, so I'm glad you said that, and he's like, they're going to be so happy with yeah, it. Yeah, and I and am. he was just nice as fuzz, and I didn't deserve it, but he didn't care. And I bet you anything it was the same guy that talked to me about Super Punch-Out. Did he okay. have like glasses? He's hot. He, is, he was hot. Yeah, it's a hot guy. That. He was the Asian? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, one of the owners of the store, whose name is DS Koopa, also streams on Twitch, and it's a pretty popular stream. Really cool. I've been there, I've watched it a few times. The conclusion is, Seattle's a really cool place, even for people who don't really want to go for the touristy stuff, you know. I didn't mention the Space Needle, because the Space Needle, I mean, here's the thing. The Space cool. Needle is cool as hell. It is. 
But you don't need to go on the Any space station. Any tourist deal. place is a tourist place for a reason. That's true. Like Mount Rushmore is cool as fuck. Yeah, 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 but come on. It's Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore would be cool no matter what faces were on it. Exactly. It's that's huge what I'm faces. Saying. That's, that's amazing. What I'm saying this like space needle. Going to the top of a tall building is cool. Wherever you are in the world. With an observation deck. So you might as well go to places that are like very Seattle. And yeah. feel like Seattle and are only in Seattle. Every big city in the United States in the world has a tall building you can go up in. Well, doesn't, and I'm not afraid to say that. Doesn't everyone want to go to a city and learn about it like, and go to all the places that not everyone goes to? Like, I, isn't that the cool yeah. part? It's finding stuff that like you can tell. The, like if, if you go to Seattle and you go to the Space Needle, how are you going to tell that story to anybody? No one cares. But if people, if you go to fucking Seattle and you go to Hangry Panda, you can tell people about Hangry Panda. But like, if you like boba, that's the best boba I ever had. Or you can go to fucking the Ave, which is like, cool as hell. Honorable mentions of places you should go. Third place books. Yeah. There's a bookstore in Ravenna. There's a bagel shop right next to it that has the best bagels and locks I've ever had. Yeah, and which is I called... think, and I dream about it. I don't even know what it's called. It's like called like Bageltopia or something. <laughs> and but it's delicious, it's, yeah. and it's by Third Place Books, and that's a really nice neighborhood too. So it's a cool neighborhood to like wander around in. Yeah, lots of like community gardens. That's another thing I always loved about Seattle. There's a community garden in every neighborhood. Cool parks. Oh, there's a lot of parks everywhere too that are really nice. Golden Gardens. Golden that's Gardens. A... I should have put Golden Gardens well, it's on a here. Pretty. It, I mean, people know about Golden Gardens. I feel like if you come and visit someone here, they will take you to Golden Gardens. But it is. It is a popular place for a reason. It's a beautiful park slash beach, and they have like all the amenities. They have tons of bathrooms and a big, beautiful playground, and you're right on the beach. And it's like soft sand, and they have fire pits. Soft so sand. Another place to go. Soft mans. Soft men. Soft sand. There's soft swings. Girls. Soft tans. We saw a seal there. We went there like this weekend. There was a seal that came up. Two seals. Every two? time I go there, I see seals. Yeah, if you want to see a seal, you can get a gold. And they gardens. come right up close. Okay, any closing comments? What's the final word you want to tell? You have 10 seconds. No, 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 you have 3 seconds. What's the last word you want to say? 3...